Namaste. Welcome, everybody. My name's Todd Norian. I'm the founder of Ashaya Yoga, and it's such a delight to be with you today. Thanks for joining me. I want to encourage you and invite you to uh, join the Ashaya community at ashayayoga.com. And uh, you'll receive uh, a lot of updates and inspiration of all the different online courses that I'm offering. And right now there's a 30-day challenge going on, and it's not too late to join. We're in our second week of it. Uh, if you join, you get all the recordings from the first uh, seven days or eight days that we've had so far. It's really a fabulous way to set a deeper commitment and get group support to meditate each morning and, and do yoga. Um, and then coming up this Saturday, I'm doing a one-day virtual retreat. And this is a time to really, really take a deep dive, to go deep into the experience of Ashaya Yoga, which is this beautiful alignment-based yoga with a very deep and empowering philosophy of radical affirmation. And I love the title of this course. It's called Winds of Grace, Finding Your Center in the Storm. And especially during you know, this unprecedented time, uh, and also as we're coming sort of more and more out of the pandemic in, into the world, um, how to really maintain a place of being connected to yourself and being centered. So we have a whole day of a variety of different experiences. There'll be some philosophy and uh, breathing exercises. Um, there's a very deep yoga nidra, which is a yogic sleep experience to help us learn how to relax more fully and some deep meditation practices. So I hope you'll check that out. And what I thought I'd do today is give sort of a little sample of a deeper spiritual retreat, but in a very modified form during this class. I'm going to do the same thing on Thursday um, on Facebook. So um, what I want to start with is this concept of spanda. So spanda is a Sanskrit word that means pulsation. And basically it talks about the two primordial forces in nature, which is the contractive force and the expansive force. One is more stable and one is more free. And that our goal in yoga is to learn how to balance stability and freedom to find the place in the middle. Now we need this pulsation because the parameters is what defines the middle. And, um, you know, you can't really know something without its contrast. So polarities do exist, and they exist for good reasons, because they educate. So for instance, we wouldn't even know what day was without night. So the experience in nature, night comes, and you know, when, when the sun rises, it's like, oh, it's light out today. Um, we have all kinds of pulsations, like through the seasons. And you know, I live in, in New England, so because our winters are so... <laughs> darn long and cold, as soon as we get into the weather, like this month is June, uh, usually our spring doesn't happen until June, um, it's such a beautiful contrast to like go outside and not have a jacket on. And I think there's more appreciation of that when you have such a, an extreme opposite with the, with the weather in the winter. Um, so we see this in nature. We see this in our very body, that the pulsation Without pulsation, we wouldn't be alive. So the heart contracts, and then it expands, and it contracts, and this, this pulsation is really the reflection of the throb of life itself. Life has this innate urge to exist and to increase. And our yoga is to help us align with that uh, primordial pulse inside ourselves because we also wish to thrive, we wish to increase, we wish to find a place where we can be centered, be okay with ourselves, and be able to find the center and in the storm, and be able to you know, serve, help other people, help ourselves, and maintain a, a sense of peace on the inside, rather than going through every day as if you know, it's like this urgent uh, survival needs. I mean, that's kind of what it feels like now. But everything, you know, for something to change, there needs to be a buildup of pressure. 
And I think that's what's happening now, you know, today. Buildup of pressure, which, you know, on a cosmic scheme is a really good thing because that's what's going to produce change in moving forward. And that's, that's really everybody's longing for freedom from suffering. That's at the root of it because we're human beings. And the yoga practice is a way to, to learn how to refine that how to make that really work for not just our physical health, but also in life, in society, and everything. So take a comfortable seat. And our first pulsation is to turn thigh bones in. That's called the inner rotation of the thighs. And then what balances that is the outer rotation of the thighs. So we're doing both. But we do the internal rotation of the thighs first in order to produce a low back curve. So reach back behind yourself. Make sure that you've got um, a trench in the low back area. If not, then you need to elevate your hips more. When the pelvis is elevated, it puts it into an anterior tilt, which is what we're going for. But then that gives you curve. But in order to balance that curve, then you externally rotate your thighs. So the external rotation is kind of spoken about in shorthand as draw your tailbone in. So thighs back is the shorthand for getting your, turning your thighs in, and then you scoop your tailbone in, and that's the opposite. And when you find the place in the middle, you have neutral spine, neutral pelvis. And that's the optimum position for your spine, the spinal discs, and the abdominal organs, like your whole body can uh, reach its optimal state of health when you have these two opposites balanced. Join your index fingers and thumbs, palms down. How interesting. Pulsation here from our individual self is the index finger, and the thumb is our universal self. The two join together as one. Palms down. Close your eyes. Take some deep breaths, and open to the throb of life itself, this urge of life to expand itself. And put that expansion right into your body. So lengthen your side ribs from your hips all the way up to your armpits. And then take the head of your arm bones back. Hug your shoulder blades onto the back of your ribs, but lift the front of your heart. And then draw your head back slightly. Just slide the palate back to give a cervical curve. And with your palate back, lift the back of the skull to lengthen the curve. As you exhale, allow your hips to settle. As you inhale, lift your heart and set a heart intention for yourself in your practice. May we align with the natural rhythm and pulse. It's like a, a heartbeat of life. And then focus on your breath. Even the breath is governed by spanda. When you inhale, there's an expansion. When you exhale, there's a contraction. And let your breath become more balanced and natural. And then begin to lengthen your exhalation. If you could inhale for a count of four, you would exhale for a count of eight. In fact, let's try that. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not so easy. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and breathe normally now. Feel your hips now connected to the earth to be stable. That means there's no fear of falling right now. You're not out of balance. You're not sort of like grasping to not fall over. You're settled. You're stable. 
there's a certain amount of safety in that, a consciousness that now we can let go of trying to survive this moment. We did it. And then we open our creativity. So with the hips stable, allow your heart to be free. Let your head be free as well. Even though we long for freedom, in order to get free, we need to get stable first. Go for steadiness, go for safety, and you will find freedom within that. But it's very difficult when you're unstable, insecure, unsteady, to try to reach for freedom. It never works. So in a way, the universe is asking us, hey, center yourself. Get centered in yourself first. And you're as centered in the world as you are in yourself. So this is why we come to the practice. Learn how to be in the center of the storm, the calm in the chaos. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. And from a place of balance where stability and freedom join in unity. Deep in the heart. Let's take a breath and chant Om. Om. Namaste. Okay, come up to standing position. You're going to need a yoga block to start. Place the block between your upper and inner thighs with the short end forward, like a Pez, little, little candies. And stand with your feet parallel, hands to your hips, squeeze the Pez. And then pass your Pez to the person behind you, if there is anyone. This is, is called thighs back, and it's really part of the inner rotation. Now, this rotation has three aspects. It starts from the inner edge of the big toe, and it wraps, almost like a candy cane stripe, all the way up to the base of the ribs, T12. We have 12 ribs at the bottom rib. So as you inner rotate your thighs, turn in, move your block back with your inner thighs, and of course, stick your butt out, and that should produce a big curve in your low back. So that's what we want. Okay, but that's not the end of it. That's just the expanded cycle. Then, keeping your thighs back, keep this block back, do the external rotation. Ah, oh, what is that? Okay, draw your tailbone in. It's as simple as that. But ultimately what you're doing is you're reversing that inner rotation by starting at T12 and then externally rotating your thighs all the way down, they turn out, and the candy cane stripe now goes in the opposite direction down to the outer heels. Okay, inner rotate from the inner edge of your feet, big toe ball mound, inner edge of the ball mound, all the way up to T12. Keeping that, don't change that, and then just outer rotate, outer heels. One more time. Inner thighs back, and then draw your tailbone down. When you're doing it correctly, you'll notice that the low belly pulls in and up. So that's a sign. And also, if you know you can do too much external rotation, let's try it. And boom, the block goes forward. Okay. What we want is the inner rotate and keep the block back while you do the outer rotation. And that's a very highly therapeutic quality because you're finding the place of balance between the two extremes. That's the Sponda principle. Thighs back, tailbone in. Another sign is that the front of the groin here hollows out. So if you put your index fingers here. Um, you know, I used to say where your underwear line is now, but who knows where the under underwear line is these days. But it's this area. And when you inner rotate your thighs, you'll feel this area goes in and it hollows out. Uh, and it relaxes. So you want to keep that relaxed as you pull your tailbone in. Otherwise, your groins pop forward, and that is a sign that you are probably flattening out your back too much. So, thighs back, 
Tailbone in, find the place of balance, stretch your arms up. It's only when we find the place in the center that life changes. And in a way, we have to listen to two sides of the situation, the extremes, integrate them both, and find a place in the middle. Very metaphorical for today. So we'll do it in our bodies. Thighs back, tailbone in. Then from your pelvis, push down into the earth through your feet. Here's the spanda, and from your pelvis, rise up. So I want you to do two things. You're going to root down as you rise up. Try it. Imagine someone were pulling down on the, on the hip bones, giving you lots of pressure down through your feet. And then you pull your navel back and up, lift your heart, and you reach higher. Now take your palate back a little bit. So your head, your heart, your pelvis, all in one line. Stretch and breathe. If you want to get free, hug your muscles to your bones. Get stable first. We hug in and then reach for freedom. Okay, now bring your arms halfway down, out to the sides. Curl your fingers back, wrist extension, and start to stretch through your forearms and breathe. This is a deceptively simple pose because if we hold this for, I'll give you 10 more seconds, you start to feel, it's like, whoa, my arms are gonna fall off. So, Hug, claw, claw your fingers, claw the air a little bit like you're holding two grapefruits here. And pull from your fingers in to the shoulder blades. Now turn palms up. Inhale, stretch your arms up. It's a very good workout for the arms. Exhale, sweep forward and bring your heart and bend forward. Touch down. You can touch blocks or you can touch the floor with eagle talons here. Lift and spread all 10 toes, and make sure when you lift your toes that your little toe is up as high as your big toe. Oftentimes, people, we have more facility with the big toe. And so even when I say, like, lift your toes, it can be done in a really imbalanced way, and then it has an effect. The toes have an effect on the shins, which has an effect on the thighs, which affects the pelvic floor, which then affects your pelvic organs, and then it affects your heart, and geez, you can get a brain aneurysm. <laughs> Kidding. Okay, so here we are, and your toes are lifted evenly. Squeeze the block, move your thighs back. Wonderful. Now, inhale, lift your heart halfway forward, and then exhale and bow. Inhale, again, reach for more freedom, and then exhale, fold in, contract. Now keep your legs stable, but inhale and lift your heart freely. Exhale, bow. Stabilize your legs, hug them to the midline. Sweep your arms out to the side, and with freedom, inhale, lift up. All the way up, and then exhale, release. Palms down. Okay, let go of the block. Come to the front of your mat. Stretch your arms up, fold forward again. Inhale, heart halfway. Exhale, right leg back in lunge. Come on, eagle talons with your fingers, or you can put your hands on blocks, it's fine. But scissor your legs, and then lift your fingers off the floor, stabilize, and hug your legs toward the middle. Stability creates safety. It helps us stay centered. In stability, you're not going anywhere fast. You're able to reflect, to assess the situation, to see it, to feel it. Keep the legs stable and lightly touch the floor. Lift your right thigh a little higher. That's the inner rotation, back leg. Take your left hip back and down. That's the outer rotation. And then try to find the place in the middle. Tailbone holds the midline. Exhale, step your right foot forward, heart forward, inhale, and then exhale, left foot back, hold, lift your fingers. This forces you to work your leg muscles more, and especially the glutes. It's a very good thing. Hug, 
Find the stability now, and with that, just lightly place your hands. Left thigh up, right hip back and down. Find the place of balance. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Claw with your finger pads. Okay to put your knees down if you need. Very good shoulder workout. Exhale, down. Point your toes back. Stabilize your legs now. Hug your shins. Notice the difference when you just let your feet be free. Just roll them out to the side. You'll see that the, um, the thighs actually, the shins pull out. And it's like a river bank. You need to have strong river banks to have a, a swifter flow. So hug your shins, bring your heels perpendicular to the floor, and the toes straight back. Then press the tops of the feet down and pull from your feet into the pelvis. That's going to support your spine. Now, interrotate your thighs. It's a little tricky when you're in the prone position. But when you interrotate, the inner edges of your thighs move toward the sky. And you do a little, you lift your butt. You moon. And then keeping your, and feel how now the groins move away from the floor. It's a good thing. And you've got a curve. But that's not the whole thing. Then add the outer rotation. Draw your tailbone in. Sitting bones flow toward the heels. But try to keep your groins off the floor. Low belly lifts as well. Okay, once you've got that, claw your hands, pull back, and then inhale, come up. From your pelvis now, extend energy through the feet. And from your pelvis, draw through your spine all the way up to the top of the head. You'll feel more freedom when your arm bones go back and the shoulder blades hug more. Stabilize your shoulder blades and the heart's going to open up more. Exhale down. One more little technique in terms of the sponda. What do we do with the arms? Well, the lower arm turns in and the upper arm turns out. That'll keep you busy for the rest of the class. <laughs> Inhale, come up again. And here's what I mean. Press your index finger and thumbs down more. That's lower arm turning in. But at the same time, you balance that by externally rotating the upper arms. Okay. Exhale, down. Come on to all fours. It'll be a little bit easier to feel it in that. Wrist creases straight ahead. Spread your fingers. Center the wrist as wide as your outer shoulder. And then turn your lower arms in. Just spin the lower arms. Spin the elbows. Everything spins in. And you'll sense, there's, you'll feel there's more weight now on your thumb and index fingers. So keeping that, externally rotate the upper arm such that your elbow creases face like headlights of a car at a 45 degree angle out in front. Melt the upper back. Lift your sitting bones. Inhale, look up. Exhale, pull your tailbone in, belly in. Look into your heart. Inhale, lift your sitting bones. Exhale, pull your tailbone in. Inhale, more freedom. Exhale, more stability. Pull your tail in. Inhale again. And exhale. Now try to find neutral spine. So the inner thighs go back. Tailbone is in, so you have a little bit less curve. What you'll find in neutral is that your base of your rib cage has to lift up a bit. Heart melts. Awesome. Walk your knees back three inches, curl your toes under, and go up into downward facing dog pose. Alternately press one heel and then the other. Go back and forth. And breathe. Okay, now bend both knees. Stabilize your hands and your arms. Pull your palms toward each other. Then turn your thighs in, lift your sitting bones way up, and now draw your tail. 
push from your heart down into your hands and go from your heart up through your back, down through your heels and stretch. You should feel the whole back side of your body stretch from shoulder blades all the way to the heels. Breathe, reach deeper for freedom. Inhale, right foot full, right leg up. Just lift it up, right leg. And turn your right knee so it's facing the floor more. Try to internally rotate your right thigh. The tendency is to turn it out. I want you to go against that to balance it. I turn, turn your leg in. Now root your left heel. Exhale, lunge forward. And then spin your left foot parallel to the back edge of your mat. Walk your hands over to the left and hug your legs and then stick your butt way back. Tailbone in. Awesome. Come up and bring your right forearm onto the right thigh, left hand to your hip for Parsvakanasana. Okay, set your feet, front heel, biceps to center of the back foot. And then... Lift your toes, hug your legs toward the middle, stabilize. When you stabilize your legs, you can bend your front knee a little bit more. So the knee is directly above the ankle. Now take your thigh bones back, reach the sitting bones back. That frees up your spine. Keeping your thighs back, draw your tailbone in. And this is where, you know, the typical way of doing it is that when you pull your tail in, you jut your left thigh forward. So keep your left thigh back and then just kind of pull your right hip under you. Very good. Lift your heart to the sky and take your left arm over the ear, thumb up. From your pelvis, root down through your feet. And from your pelvis, stretch more. Reach. In order to find freedom, stabilize more. Hug your legs in toward the middle. You know, Tantra teaches us that we're already free. It's not something we have to acquire. It's just how do you access and actually experience your freedom? Well, it comes when you're able to become more stable inside. Keep breathing. Exhale, release, spin down to the floor. Step back into downward dog pose. Find your breath. Make sure the pulsation is still going. Inhale, left leg up. And lift the inner left thigh. So that's going to give you that inner rotation. And then exhale, lunge forward. Square your right foot to the back edge of the mat. Walk your hands over to the right, lean your hips back behind you, and then slowly come up, left forearm on your thigh. It is also okay to touch the floor if you want to go deeper, and hug your legs, left knee over the ankle. Now, thighs back, tailbone in. It's the same thing we did with the pez, with the block, taking our thighs back, tailbone in into asana. So what we learn in the Ashaya method is that once you learn the form, the technique repeats itself in every single pose. But of course it feels slightly different in this pose because our legs are wide apart. And stretch your right arm up and over, lift your heart toward the sky more. From your pelvis root the feet, stabilize, and from your pelvis reach more freedom. Full deep breath. Pull your ribs in slightly. Very good. Exhale, release. Come into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. All the way down. Let's practice cobra. Stretch your toes back. Hug your shins toward the middle so heels are going to come a little closer together. Roll your thighs in. Keeping that, pull your tailbone down. Inhale, come up, claw all 10 finger pads. Pull isometrically back, lower arm in, upper arm out. You did it. And then reach for freedom. Breathe, come up a little higher. 
Yeah. Exhale. Release, downward dog pose. Glide your right knee forward for pigeon. And bring your right knee toward the right hand. It's not right in the middle. It's toward the, uh, off to the right. Curl your back toes under. Hug your legs to the middle. And draw your left hip forward more, right hip back, tailbone in. Root the pelvis down and root it evenly. Instead of, you know, rolling over to the right side, it goes straight down. And as you root the pelvis down, lift your spine more. Walk your hands around to the left, bend your left knee, and bring your heel towards your hip more. For those with more flexibility in the shoulders, spin so that your hand is just below the toes on the front of the foot, elbows straight up. And then take the head of the arm bone back, turn your lower arm in, upper arm out. Hug your left shoulder blade deep into the back ribs. You make a big, strong contraction there. And then lift the chest. Drag your back knee forward isometrically and then pull your tailbone down. So all these actions, they come like as a pulsation. They're opposite, they balance each other and they integrate and they find a quality of unity which is always the place in the middle. Exhale, release. Step back down, facing dog pose. Inhale. And glide your left knee forward now over toward the left hand, right toes curled under. Breathe, pause for a moment, feel the stretch. And then, if you want to get free, hug your legs. Stable first. Cool your back toes under. Hug your right shin, but widen your right thigh to the right. Then, make sure you're not sitting on your left hip, but rather the pelvic floor is parallel to the floor. So you have to lean a little bit over to your right. Lift the inner edge of your right thigh up more. The knee stays on the floor, but that's going to help you internally rotate the back leg. Right hip comes forward more. Keeping that, externally rotate the left thigh. Tailbone in. Now root the pelvis squarely down into the floor, but lift your spine. Turn to your right, bend your right knee, take hold of your foot or your ankle. And to whatever extent, try to bring your heel towards your hip. Sometimes the um, hamstring will cramp. If so, just stretch your legs straight out. One way to avoid the cramp is uh, press the base of your thigh down, spread your toes, drag the back knee forward isometrically, and then draw your tailbone in. And if you got the shoulder mobility, then spin your elbow straight up to the sky, curl your toes back into your hand. Internally rotate your right arm, right forearm, externally rotate the upper arm, and then the right shoulder blade hugs into the back ribs, and turn your ribs slightly toward the left so you're straight. Drag the back knee isometrically forward. Draw your tailbone in. Exhale, release. Come on your belly. Bend both knees. Take hold of the feet. Walk your knees in for more stability. Don't let them splay out. You have to hug them. Turn your toes out and then tailbone in. And come up down your asana bow. Use your ankles, push back, but at the same time, head the arm bones go back, hug your shoulder blades onto your back ribs, and breathe. Exhale down, child's pose. Press back, big toes touch. Arms in front, head down. Knees can be a little bit wider to make space for your belly. Take a couple of deep breaths. Enjoy.
slowly come up. Take a seat with your legs wide at about a 90 degree angle this way. And then manually turn your thigh bones in. I'm giving you a lot of variety of poses to really work the rotations of the thighs. So turn in. And remember the inner rotation starts at the inner edge of the big toe ball mount. Candy cane stripe up all the way to T12. So when you do that, what's going to happen is your inner thigh, the groin area here, will hollow and go back. Check to make sure you have a low back curve. And if it's just too difficult to get the, the curve in, then elevate your hips. Sit up on a blanket. Good. And place your hands behind you on eagle talons. And as you push the floor down, lengthen your spine up. So the spine, you're lifting through the spine here. You lift up, but at the same time, root your thighs down. And that's the spine of the thighs root. That's the stability. And then you lift. Now, squeeze your legs toward each other. Ankles hug isometrically. And the muscles start to pull onto the bone. Stability brings safety. It's really good for the joints. And right now, you're getting your muscles to work. Try to get the upper inner knee area to engage. Can you engage that muscle? It's the bottom part of the vastus medialis muscle. It's one of the quadriceps. And that muscle is responsible in part for lifting the kneecap up. And usually it's, um, it's not engaged. So hug your ankles toward each other. Press the upper inner knee points down. Then twist to your right and exhale. Begin to fold forward over the leg. But as you're going to the right, do more of an inner rotation on your left thigh. Widen your left thigh, left hip, out to the left more. And then you can even twist, so left hand to the outer right shin, pull. Lengthen your right ribs a little bit more because they're going to contract because you're going in the direction of this leg. So you need to use dynamic symmetry. We want both sides to be symmetrical. You've got to work a little harder on the right side because of the um, dynamic of the pose. So you lift the right ribs more to create balance. The whole goal of our practice is to find the place in the middle between the extremes. And when you find that place, you align with the place in the middle. There's an experience that opens up. A gateway to the heart opens and you enter into your, your true nature, which is free. Heart toward the right foot, widen your left thigh away. Go a little deeper. Push your left thigh away from you more. And then inhale, come up. Exhale, go to the left. When you start leaning left, the tendency is for the right hip to follow you. Uh -uh. Stabilize it. Keep the right hip down. And then turn. Inner rotate your right thigh more. Bring your heart towards your foot more. Now lengthen your left side ribs as much as your right. But the left side, because there's a natural contraction, you got to go more. Breathe. Inner rotate your thighs. Stick your butt way back behind you. Then keeping that, draw your tailbone in. Make sure that your sitting bones don't leave the floor. So you have to get both sitting bones down. Pull your belly in. Ribs back. Breathe. Come up, bend your knees, cross up the shins, right hand behind, left hand on the right knee, inhale, lift up, and then exhale, twist. As you twist to the right now, inner rotate your left thigh more and widen your left hip. Inhale, center, 
Exhale. Twist to the left. And as you go to the left, inner rotate your right thigh and widen your right sitting bone away. I'm, just, I'm giving you opposites to work with here. Inhale to center. Okay, take a comfortable seat. <clears throat> We're gonna move now into mantra practice. So we'll do a few minutes of japa mantra, and then we'll do some pranayama, and we'll do a short meditation, followed by shavasana. So practice now moving your thigh bones in, and notice how much more easily they turn in because you've done so much work in the hips, and then draw your tailbone down. And that's what happens. It's like as soon as you learn the techniques, like there's, there's a lot of language and a lot of technique, but when you can find the areas that I talk about in your body, like the inner thigh, inner armpit, um, tailbone, groins, like all those areas, it becomes more like second nature. And then you'll feel the effects like, wow, I've never... I've never been able to sit like this in so much comfort before. Well, that's a sign of, of you found the spawn that you found the, just the right amount of balance. So, with your thighs back, draw your tailbone in. Join your index fingers and thumbs, palms down. There's many kinds of mantras and different classes of mantras and the one we're going to do is called Japa Mantra, which is you chant out loud or in a whisper where your lips and your mouth and your tongue move. And Japa means to mutter, actually. It also means to repeat. So we're just going to repeat the phrase over and over and over again. It's in Sanskrit. And um, there is a PDF on the Facebook page uh, you have to find it. Um, but this one's pretty simple. It's Namah Shivaya, Namah Shivaya, Namah Shivaya, Namo Namaha. Okay? And Namah Shivaya is the five syllable mantra that represents the five elements. Okay? So um, there's a little bit of a melody to it. So you can either listen to me first and then join, or just come and Sing at the same time. Nama Shivaya, Nama Shivaya, Nama Shivaya, Namo Namaha. Nama Shivaya, Nama Shivaya. Nama Shivaya Namo Namaha Nama Shivaya Nama Shivaya 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 Shivaya Namo Namaha Nama Shivaya Nama Shivaya Nama Shivaya Namo Namaha Nama Shivaya Nama Shivaya Nama Shivaya Especially right after 
the Java mantra stops. You feel the continuation of the vibration of the mantra, the essence of the mantra continues to echo and reverberate deep inside. Follow the impulse to go inward. Now we'll do pranayama, which is breathing techniques. This one is called the ujjayi breath. Uj means uprising, and jai means victory. So it's the triumphantly uprising breath. It's in and out through the nostrils, very soft, gentle breath, but you hug the base of the throat to create an aspirated, whispering sound. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but it does sound a little bit like the ocean. can feel a little bit like you're breathing, like sipping breath through a straw. And even though the base of your throat is contracted, you keep your face and jaw relaxed. It takes a little bit of effort. It's like you're pulling breath in through a narrow tube. But it shouldn't be so effortful that you know, like you choke or you cough. It's actually quite gentle, but there's a little bit of friction that goes on. Now make this sound consistent. The volume is consistent. It's rich. It's the same thickness throughout the entire breath. In other words, don't dissipate or fade out the breath when you get to the end. So you have to give a little more power at the end. And maybe you need to reduce the power, back off the power at the beginning of the breath so you maintain a consistency throughout. After your next exhalation, breathe normally. Feel how effortless it is to enter a meditation. And I'm going to invite you to practice thinking the mantra, hum sa, hum sa, as a mental thought simply place the mantra into the field of your awareness. And then repeat Hamsa Mantra in a slow, natural pace, not too fast, not too slow. The mantra becomes the anchor of focus. And you let all the other thoughts go. Just let them be as they are. Simply be with the mantra itself. And now make the mantra repetition as effortless as possible. So it becomes very, very subtle. And imagine the mantra is way off in the distance somewhere, way in the background of your consciousness. And at times your mind is going to wander away to other thoughts. And when that happens, gently bring it back to the mantra.
And there's a certain time in the practice where you feel like you enter into a vault of stillness. But even in stillness, there's the pulse, the vibration of life. Just as in movement, there's the essence of stillness. In stillness, there's the essence of the pulsation. You can't make yourself or force yourself to go into the vault of stillness. But if it happens, you just simply allow it to happen. And in this space, it's as if you step into the threshold between your individual nature and universal nature. And you go right to the place of balance where contraction and expansion join. And let your awareness, for as long as you can, just dwell in the space between both extremes, the threshold of possibility and healing and insight. Again, if your mind wanders, come back to the mantra. And the more you can let go, the more you can allow the mantra, the more you go in to the vault of silence. It's like entering into a cocoon or a chrysalis of consciousness. imagine being inside of a dome or a cocoon of radiant golden light. And inside this space is silence, stillness, and a deep sense of inner peace. Dwell there for some time. gently release the mantra and come lie down onto your back now. Let it all go and rest. As a part of the deep practice, the spiritual practice. It's like a sadhana, which means spiritual practice. It 
it's good to actually end in Shavasana, which means corpse. It's the corpse pose. And it's symbolic of letting go of our attachments, letting go of our experience, letting go of any judgment, So as you exhale, relax your muscles and actually release the muscle as though it turns into liquid and just flows off the bones. And then release the bones deep into the earth. Especially release the large bones of the body, the pelvis. The pelvis become very heavy and open. And then go to your shoulders, release shoulders, the shoulder blades, collar bones, arm bones. And then release your jaw, your teeth. And notice how then your skull releases. Relax your entire head, and your eyes. The corpse pose is the metaphor when all external experience dissolves, all doing, all movement ceases. And yet, the throb of life force continues. Let yourself enter the state of complete stillness. Nothing moves. Nothing really is needed. Nowhere to go. Nothing to accomplish. It's a state that's devoid of activity even responsibility temporarily dissolves. And you enter a kind of beingness that is so free. Explore that freedom now. slowly begin to return. Receive the blessing of freedom in the form of your breath. And then breathe into your body and let your body be the stabilizing factor for your freedom. 
and extend freedom through the body down to your toes and down to your fingers. And feel and sense the harmony and the relationship between freedom and stability in your body. That freedom needs stability to be truly free. And stability needs freedom in order to not become so rigid and stuck. And allow freedom and stability to be like a dance in your heart. Neither is going away. And they learn to live together, to uplift and enhance each other. And then slowly begin to move, fingers and toes, take a stretch. Bend your knees in and roll to your right side. And come on up to sitting. In the sitting position, see if you can recapture that quality of stillness. Draw into your heart. May you take the stillness, the peace, the freedom, the stability that you experienced at any time in this class. May you take that with you into your day. And find the place where freedom and stability coexist. And go to the place in the middle, deep in the heart. And there, rest in the deepest depth of freedom. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. And let's take a deep breath and chant Om. Thank you so much. That was really wonderful. So I don't know if you experienced the depth of that experience, but that's what the day-long retreat is going to be like. Um, there'll be some teaching. There's going to be these practices. We'll have a little more time to do our asana practice and a little more time do breathing and meditation. I don't want time to be a factor. That's why I want to, you know, dedicate a full day to this practice and this journey. So if you'd like to join me, please come. You're all invited. And that's happening sat this Saturday, June 13th. It starts at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And thank you so much. And these classes are free, and I thoroughly enjoy doing them. And if you wish to support me and Ashaya through a contribution, then go to ashayayoga.com, practice online, and we do accept donations. They're much appreciated. And I appreciate your presence here today. Okay, be free and stable. <laughs>